Hello and welcome back. Evan Daly here with another SurfWatch tutorial. So the first thing I want to do is set up my Unity editor. I'm going to take my project view, dock it over here, middle click the console to kill that, and then take the hierarchy and dock it over here. And that's just going to free up some more space for SurfWatch, which I'm going to dock right here. And I'm going to click on New Texture. And when I do this, I try to do it in a new scene because SurfWatch creates um, creates some game objects that I don't want to mix up with um, with my own game objects. So now I'm going to click on this Y gizmo and just go into the top-down view. Um, so now what's going on here? Well, if you're in Blender and you, you like, let's create an icosphere, and then I'm just going to go into edit mode and unwrap the object. So now, basically, what we're seeing in Unity is this. We've got the model on the left and a flat um, a flat layout of the model, like the, the UV coordinates of the model on the right. So here's the preview. We can see a 3D model. You can right click to pan around that. Uh, and then right here we've got the UV coordinates of that model. And this is just a cube, so each face is actually mapped to this whole plane. Um, later we're going to take this icosphere and um, use that here and we'll, we're actually going to see um, all of these UV coordinates. Um, so the first thing I want to do is show off the poly lasso tool. So to enable that we can click on this button or we can just hit the A key. And now we're going to start creating points. To, the, to do that you just left click. Uh, if you left click and this is on, if it doesn't do anything you might have to reset your Unity interface. You can just hit revert to factory settings in this layout tab. And that's just going to give Unity a clean slate. Uh, and th that's not going to change anything about your project. It's just going to reset the editor. And uh, that, I'm not sure if that's a glitch with Unity or with Surfwatch, um, but I know that the developer is working hard to add more features to this and to fix the bugs that he already knows about. So just be patient. It's it's still in early development, but, but the guy has been really, really active. And uh, I, I've been in contact with him. He, he seems like He seems like he's really on top of it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to create some points, and then I'm just going to hit, I'm going to hit enter to close that shape. Now, up here, um, we, we don't see anything yet, that's because it's not actually, um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't update every single frame, we have to hit space to update the preview. And now what, what that did is, took a projection of this and mapped it onto the cube. So, it looks like like if you move around the scene view we actually created some more geometry right like we created a shape here it's got like height width and depth it's it's a 3d shape but in this view it's actually a two-dimensional shape it, it looks 3d it does a really great job imi imitating 3d but if we scroll to the side you can see this is this is still gonna be a flat face right and so that means we're making our model look a lot better with basically zero overhead, we're not actually adding any geometry. We're just we're just making it look like, like we're making it we're f we're faking detail, and it looks really really nice. Um, unless you see it exactly from the side. So let's continue with the poly lasso tool. There's um, we activate it with this button or the A key, and then we have all these different options. So I'm going to click on this one, and create another shape and then hit space. right? And now with this one uh, we have more fake geometry on the model and we also have different materials. Um, as you create these shapes uh, undo that. Uh, as you create these shapes they're assigned material maps and so we have these things called material sets. I'll, I'll make a whole video about material sets later. Um, but basically each material set has eight materials and then properties for dirt emission and adjustment. Um, so, if we if we want to um, if we want to assign these different materials out of this material set, all we have to do is use the the number keys at the top of the keyboard. So I'm just going to click on this and hit two, click on this and hit three, and click on this and hit four. Now I'm going to hit space, and you can see it, it's taking these different materials and assigning them to the different objects. Now all we have to do to change these is um, choose a different material set. 
and it's go it's gonna um, give us different options. Like, like basically, we have, we have different color schemes to choose from, but but they're more than just color schemes; they're they're actual patterns. Um, so I hope that makes sense. And I know I'm I'm probably gonna throw a lot of features at you in this video, so if you need to write them down, do that. And also, don't feel pressured to memorize everything right now, because you can come back and watch this video later. So, so far we've covered creating basic shapes and projecting them onto the cube. Uh, now let's look at some more features for the Poly Lasso tool. I'm just going to click back on this shape, and I'm going to create like sort of a basic wine bottle type thing. And I, I accidentally just made this symmetry thing here, so I'm just going to hit Shift and right click to get rid of that. And I'm going to delete everything out of the scene. and go back into top view. Now activate the tool, make sure this one's selected. And actually I, th I think I'll use this one. Uh, as you're, like after you create a point, as you're lining up the next point, you can hold shift to lock it into 45 degree angles. So I'm going to use that to make sure I have a perfectly horizontal line here. I'm going to go up and then uh, this one, this one I'm going to use, I'm just going to click around without hitting shift so that I can get uh, more more precision. Okay, so now I have half of a bottle here, and I'm just going to hit the number 6. And basically what that does is it, it mirrors our geometry, it, it just repeats the pattern in reverse. And then I can hit enter to finish the pattern. And uh, sadly it didn't close off our shape, and that that's because of the the pattern that I was using. If I had used this one, it actually would have closed the shape correctly. So that was my bad. Let's let's try that again with this shape. Whoops. A to turn on the poly lasso. And let's just create a bottle. Six to repeat, and E to close the shape. Now, and now that we have this shape here, uh, if, if we turn off the poly lasso, um, if this is selected, we could actually just um, choose different patterns, and it'll actually modify this for us. So we're, we're not stuck with one pattern once we create it. And uh, um, th there's also symmetry modifiers. I think I'm going to do a whole video about symmetry later, so I'm not going to cover that too much now. Um, we can also double click to fill UV islands. I'm not sure if I covered that earlier. Um, I'm looking at my notes. Let's see. We created shapes. We used clicking and enter. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but when you create a shape, you're free to use Unity's um, built-in transform tools. So like, let's say I hit space, I render this. I don't like its position. I'm just going to click on this transform tool and move it around. And then maybe I, maybe I want to scale it. So I'll just click on this one and scale that up, and then render, scale it down, render. So th this gives us a ridiculous amount of flexibility, and that, like this is so much easier than using something like like the paint tool in GIMP, or, photo or like Photoshop, or even in Blender. Um, we just have a lot more flexibility here, I think. So now I want to use the Icosphere that we created earlier. So uh, if, if you create something in Blender, make sure that you hit U and unwrap it before you save it into Unity. Um, because Surforge needs UV coordinates to figure everything out. Now I'm going to save this as Icosphere, and I'm going to put it in a folder called Objects. Objects, Icosphere. And I, I'm going to give it its own folder, because later we're going to have... Um, different bitmaps for this and a material, and I just want to keep it all organized. Alright, so I'm saving this Icosphere as Icosphere.blend. Now I'm going back to Unity. Objects, Icosphere, Icosphere.blend. Now, uh, we, wanna, we want that model to be here in this preview, 
So we're going to click on render and use this open model slot. We can't take the whole Blender file. We have to just take the the actual mesh data out of that. Drop that on, on open model. And now you can see we have the accuracy view here and the UV coordinates here. And the, there's still this artifact from before, so I'm just going to hit space and it should re-render. All right, now grab the poly lasso tool and I can just double click in these islands to fill these shapes. Whoops. And for some reason it doesn't want to do the last one. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, but now if I render this, you can see we have all these different like crack looking things here. And I think that um, my UV coordinates got messed up. I don't know why this looks like this. So I'm just going to undo a few times. And I want to unwrap the model again. And I'm just going to give it some uh, some island margin so that these aren't clipping together like that. So one more time, U to unwrap, smart UV project, and an island margin of like 0.05. All right, now save that and go back. And it, it doesn't look like this updated automatically, so I'm just going to create a new scene. Don't save. New texture. And just take the mesh data again to the open model slot. Alright, so now go back and poly lasso. Click, click, click. And render. Alright, so now I can take each of these. And we also have um, seamless, expand, and shrink tools. Basically, seamless um, figures out what our model would look like if it was repeating. So you could use this for like a repeating ground texture. Um, now, I'm going to use this shrink tool, and it's going to resize these poly lasso objects. And you can also just use the left arrow on your keyboard. Now I'm going to hit space, and you can see... Uh, the geometry looks really cool already. And it, and again, it looks like we're adding cracks here, but it's it's still the same amount of polygons and vertices. Um, now we can select any of these objects and assign different materials to them with the number keys. So I'm just going to hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Space to render. That looks fairly interesting. Um, I like the yellow painted metal stripes material. That looks really cool. And then there's also a steel and gray blue hex uh, material set that looks really good. I just love these hex tiles. So anyway, uh, let's go back to the first one. And I'm just going to try to create some emissive light areas. So like, let's say I want uh, this little corner to have a light. Um, I can hold control, and that's going to highlight the piece that we're hovering over. So that's this one. When I hit control, you can see it flashing. Um, so now I'm just going to take like this area and chop it off and assign it a new texture. So to do that, um, first make sure you have the object selected in the in the scene view, and then uh, left click, left click, control, left click, and I just broke that geometry into two pieces. Right. So render that again, and now I'm just going to. Um, the 0 and 9 keys correspond to the emissive bitmaps. And uh, I like the 0 option better. Now I'm just going to shrink that a few times, render it again, and just move it slightly. And left arrow to shrink it more. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, now let's say I want, like, let's say I want a light to be just on this triangle. Um, lining that up by eye would be pretty hard, right? Because we know, like, we know it's somewhere in this shape, but uh, if we want it to be precise, we can actually use um, down here. I can't see it because my my camera controls are down there, but uh, there's a UV button right here. So if I click on that, now we can actually see the UV layout, and so we can see that that triangle. And the the poly lasso tool. Um, we've got different locking things here. We can we can snap to grid, snap to UVs, snap to objects, and snap to active shape. 
Um, we just want to make sure Snap to UVs is selected. And now as we move around, you can see it just sort of like clicks onto that UV. So that's going to let us uh, create a light exactly on that triangle. All right, and now th these are on the same plane. Uh, to, to prevent that, I could have moved my construction plane and like spawned it at a height of 2. Um, since I forgot to do that, I'm just going to hit W to activate this transform tool and just pull that up in the scene view. Now if I hit space, now you can see we have a cool shape there. And I'm going to hit 9 to give it an emissive texture. And it's kind of uh, bleeding out a little bit too far, so I'm just going to shrink that. Whoops. Shrink. Space. Alright. Making progress. Let's, uh, let's shrink it some more. Now, I plan on making a whole video about um, the material sets and materials later. Um, but just for now, just so you can see it, uh, if I want to change the properties on that light, I go down to Emission, and this corresponds to the 9 material, and this corresponds to the 0 material. So I think I assigned 9 here, so now I can just um, drag this around like that. And we can even, um, after we export this to a material, uh, we can even animate this uh, Emission property. Um, like we could like sort of make it bleed or whatever. Um, we can also change the color on this. Uh, but again, I'm going to make a whole video about pro um, the materials and all of these properties later. Uh, we have access to a lot and we can even um, adjust the dirt on the whole model. I just think it's fantastic. So anyway, um, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, let me see if I have anything else to share about the poly lasso tool. Um, I think I covered breaking shapes, so that was left click, poly lasso, and then just control click off the shape. When you do that, um, if like if I try to crack it here, it's not going to work. Uh, you can't really just crack the model, you have to actually break it into two pieces. So when you do it, make sure that you actually like g go off the model somehow like that. So before you go, I just have a few more tips. Um, I, I went ahead and I exported the material from Surforge. That gave me um, this that, that gave me these six bitmaps. So if I, if I highlight those, you can see what it gave us. There's specular, diffuse, height maps, normal maps, emission maps, and ambient occlusion. And I took those and I dropped those onto the Unity standard shader, which I'm calling P PBR Icosphere. And I, I used the specular setup. And so I just dropped each one into its corresponding bitmap and dropped that on the object. Now I want to see what it looks like in different lighting conditions. So I'm just going to click on this this square right here. And that, that puts me in is isometric view. And then I'm going to click on this and hit F. And that's just going to allow me to pan around the object. Right, and now I, I open up the lighting window from this tab. And we have this skybox field in environment lighting. And I'm just going to take some of the uh, default Surforge skyboxes and drop them into this skybox field. So let's try Night Blur. I, th I think the model looks pretty good still. Uh, let's try Sunset Blur. Looks okay. Yeah, I think that it, I think our model's too reflective. So um, in the next video, I'm covering materials and material sets. And um, in that video, I'll show you how to tweak like glossiness and specularity and, and stuff like that within Surforge. Um, so if that's interesting to you, I'll see you in the next video.